What is up everybody, it is your boy Herf here, back on the Duel Links Entertainment channel, and today we're going to be talking about a deck that recently got a slight nerf, but I still think is really strong and definitely one of the best decks in the meta. So that deck is, if you can't tell by now, Stick and Chair Dark Lords. Uh, the deck is super strong. You just play Destiny Draw and it's basically the same thing. It's It's phenomenal. I really like it a lot. A lot of people kind of consider that the deck is kind of, you know, dying or falling off, but I would firmly disagree. I think this deck is phenomenal still. Let's just get right into it. So Destiny Draw, whenever you've lost 2,000 life points over the course of the duel, you get to draw any card in your deck, which, by the way, is absolutely insane, because if you're unaware, Dark Lords are constantly paying life points in the increments of 1,000, so naturally you're going to get 2,000 and then you're just going to get to draw any card in your deck. So what do those cards do? Well, let's start with the stick and chair engine, the stick or the scepter. So when this card is normal summoned, normal or special summoned, you can add one star seraph monster from your deck to your hand, except itself. An Xyz monster that is summoned using three or more monsters, including this card on the field as Xyz materials, gains this effect. When it is Xyz summoned, you can target one other card on the field, destroy it, and if you do, draw one card. So with the scepter and both the chair, you're only going to want to go into monsters that have that need three materials typically. I mean, you can go into monsters with two, but you can only do it with two star scepters because the chair, if you read it, says cannot be used as an Xyz material for an Xyz summon except for an Xyz summon that uses three or more monsters as Xyz materials. If you normal summon or special summon a star, star serif monster except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do draw one card, then you can special summon it if it is a star serif monster. So, this guy will normal summon, and you can get a, uh, a chair from your hand. If you, so if you open like stick plus chair, okay, so stick will search a chair as well as chair will summon itself, okay? When this guy is special summoned, you get to draw a card as well as the chair that you search because it's it's it, it comes into your hand on resolution of this card's normal summon, it can special summon itself from your hand. So basically you're going to get three bodies to the field off of just a scepter, and a chair which is absolutely phenomenal it's uh, it's an insane combo i'll show you guys the combo in the game but so pretty much you're only going into three materials so the two best materials one are going to be delteros or ouroboros so delteros uh you know you can detach material to destroy one card on the field and ouroboros says once per turn you can act uh, you can detach one exceeds material from this card then activate one of these effects each effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field target one card your opponent controls return that card to the hand send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish that target so basically you can activate any of those effects uh once per duel and once per turn so uh, if so, typically if you're going first, you're going to rip a card out of your opponent's hand. But if you're going second, you might want to bounce a card. All these kind of stuff. And if you like, let's say you went first, you ripped a card out of the opponent's hand. Next turn, you could bounce a card, but you could not rip a card because you already did that during the course of the duel. So that's how Ouroboros works. The, all the other Xyz monsters, you can honestly put whatever here, so I'm not really going to go over them because they're not that important. We're going to go over the rest of the deck. So Book of Moon is a tech card. Uh, any two cards could go here, although Book of Moon is just absolutely phenomenal right now because it's probably one of the best going second cards in the game. Uh, Chalice is pretty good as a replacement, but you really need Book of Moon. Cosmic Cyclone, because it's back removal, you could replace this with something like uh, Forbidden Lance, which is or Mystical Space Typhoon. Brand new card. But Cosmic Cyclone, in my opinion, is just the best. Uh, also, it helps you proc Destiny Draw, which is really nice. Uh, Desire, when it's normal summoned, or it, it can be normal summoned by using one fairy, which both the stick and the chair are both fairies, so that's nice. Uh, you can tribute some in this card by tributing one fairy type monster once per turn. You can target one monster or your opponent controls. This card loses exactly 1,000 attack, and if it does, send that target to the graveyard. So it's non-destruction removal, which is really good. 
Nastin. Uh, you can discard two Dark Lord cards to special summon it. Uh, Tez, you can discard this card from your hand to protect all Dark Lord cards you control. Uh, Amdusk, you can discard this card and one other Dark Lord card uh, to add one Dark Lord card from your graveyard to your hand. So you can like discard this plus Ixchel to get banishment from the graveyard, for example. And Ixchel, you can, I, I forgot to cover this, but you can discard this card and one other Dark Lord card to draw two cards. And Amdusk, Ixchel, Nastin, and Tez all share the same effect of you can target a uh, Speller Trap, a Dark Lord Speller Trap in the graveyard to use their effects. So you skip the cost of something like Sanctified, which sends a monster for cost. You skip that. You just you just copy the effect, not the cost, which is really strong, especially because the trap is a non-targeting negate, which is really amazing because it says send one Dark Lord card from your hand or face up on your field to the graveyard to negate the effects of one effect monster on the field till the end of this turn. And if you do, gain life points equal to its attack, which is really good. Dark Lord Contact, Special Summon, and Banishment of the Dark Lords, one of the most broken ultra rares in the game. Broken cards in the game, just period. Add one Dark Lord card from your hand, uh, and that's pretty much it. it. You can only activate one Dark Lord card, but if you, you can use uh, something like Ixchel to copy its effect, so you don't really have to pay attention to the, uh, you can only activate it once, so that's really strong. Very, very good, and now I got some replays for you guys showing you how the deck works, so let's jump, jump straight into that. All right, uh, okay, replays, nice, nice. All right, so this first one is actually against uh, Raymond. He plays for Supreme European Monarchs. I actually played him this morning uh, while I was getting ready for work, and I was like, oh, my God, it's uh, it's Raymond. I'm facing somebody with a gold icon who's been to Worlds. So this guy is a very good player. He's playing water, so it's he's playing a meta matchup, and uh, I think that I kind of have him on a leash in this duel here. I open pretty well. So I open Ixchel, Amdusk, Book of Moon, and Scepter, which are all phenomenal cards to open. So he's going to do his typical Territory of the Sharks opener. He's going to do his thing. He's going to go into that guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Book of Moon. He's going to Lance himself, so I'm going to Book of Moon again, make sure Dweller you know, gets flipped face down. I'm going to draw, draw, draw. I'm going to add a scepter, or I'm going to add a chair. My bad, not a scepter. I'm going to banishment. I'm going to summon. So the reason that I normal summoned the the scepter still is because I wanted the extra search. And even though I couldn't special summon it from my hand, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a turn where I'm going to have not only a cosmic cyclone but also the trap and then i'm going to have i've already used double book of moon so the trap is going to be my main form of disruption for his turn so he's going to go diva i'm going to attempt to negate he's going to lance which is fine he's going to go all the way into his big guy here and so this is why searching a chair was so good is because now um in the next turn right i don't really need to worry about going into like going to any other place besides just you know grabbing another scepter and then just doing my full stick and chair play so he can't kill me here there's no way so he's gonna deal a little bit of damage but i'm just gonna d-draw for the scepter so i'm just gonna do full stick chair combo so stick summons chair which will draw a card and search a card so because I drew into the chair, I could just special summon it right away because of chair's effect. But if I wanted to, or if this was any other card, I would be able to special summon the chair from my hand. So now I'm going to exceed summon into Deltaros. I'm going to get a pop. I'm going to pop again. And him realizing that one card isn't going to be able to uh, overcome anything, he just scoops it right up. So that's basically how the deck works. I mean, your Dark Lord plays are going to help your stick chair plays. Your stick chair plays are going to help your Dark Lord plays. They just have a lot of really good synergy because they just both get through the deck so efficiently. So this one, I, I can't tell what I face. I can't remember at least what am I facing here. So I open kind of okay. Okay, so I'm facing Blue Eyes, which is probably one of this deck's worst matchups in my opinion. Because Blue Eyes can just special summon so many big monsters that it's hard for this deck to deal with. 
so we just opened uh, Sage plus uh, Sage plus cards of consonants. So he's just going to do that play. I'm going to search my X gel because I really want to be able to uh, get some stick chair plays going because that's honestly your best turn one. So I draw stick and chair. So we're just going to do the full stick chair combo again. We're going to get a special summon. We're going to get a draw. We're going to just do all the stuff. We're going to special summon. We're going to pop. We're going to draw. We can pop again. We can just, we can absolutely, like, this deck is absolutely insane. Like, we left the uh, the search in the grave in case we needed to search for a Tez because we already, uh, so the reason that we didn't go for a search last turn off of Ixchel is because we already had Book of Moon in the grave. Or we, we already had a Book of Moon live, so there was no real reason to use this in case I needed to protect myself from destruction. So I let that sit there, and then, so I kept my Book of Moon because Banishment can search for a Tez to protect myself from destruction. So there's no real need for the Sanctified, but now realizing that my life points are going to get low, if I don't get access, I'm just going to grab my Sanctified right now. I'm going to search Amdusk, which I can use to put... I can use to put the sanctified in the grave, and then now I, I just I just basically kill him. I'm gonna get a free body to the field. I'm gonna tribute some in. I'm just gonna, yeah, it's it's too easy. This deck is too good. So basically, you wanna always be thinking about managing your life points as well as managing your bodies on the field because stick and chair both need three materials or uh, a three material xyz monster you need to make sure that your field is open when you do it because we only have three zones so even if you have one monster on the field you can clog your stick chair plays all right so in here we just uh we just open stick chair we just open stick chair forehead it's that easy and if you don't open stick chair, use your Dark Lord engine to get it. So it's it's pretty pretty easy actually. And we're gonna draw. We draw into Book of Moon and another chair. So I mean this this deck just gives you so many options even beyond just uh, what it what it may seem like at first. So he's gonna do his full gaga -ga combo gaga -ga -ga combo. You know what I mean? So he's just going to go straight for Sister, and I realize that the other two cards in his hand, because he's going to search for Bolt, I don't know if he has a Wind in his hand or not, and I don't know if he's a good player or not. So Bolt needs a Gagaga -ga on the field in order to activate itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip Sister down immediately, because unless he has hard drawn Wind, which I have no idea, right, because he didn't search it. If he had, if I, if he... If he searched Wind, you should save the Book of Moon for an Xyz. However, because he searched Bolt, and Bolt can only be used if he controls a Gagaga, -ga -ga, just flip this down. But he, of course, he has the Wind. He's going to go into Coat. He's going to Bolt, and he's just going to swing for 1800, which isn't a great play. But yeah, now, I was actually super lucky off of this because uh, I was kind of just like, well, we'll see what I draw. Hopefully, I get a Dark Lord play. But I drew into another scepter, which is actually kind of insane, because what I didn't realize is that if you have if you exceed with double scepter, you get to pop two cards, because both of them will activate. So that was insane, and you get to draw two cards. So yeah, that that is good. That was oh my Jesus. Right, so now we're on to the fourth and final one, and then I'll get out of here. But yeah, just like that, just using your stick chair plays to get to your Dark Lord plays, or Dark Lord plays to get to stick chair plays. I mean, it's pretty. I don't want to say basic, but the this this form of Dark Lords is probably easier than it has been in the past. Honestly, uh, it's probably one of the easiest forms of Dark Lords to play because it's so like you either have a combo or you don't. So this guy's playing heretics for some for some reason, and uh, you know we top deck into a banishment, which we are going to search for an X shell to ditch our superbia to eventually draw into a stick. So that's what. So like, if you have a card in the top eight cards of, if you have a stick and a chair in the top eight cards of your deck, which is an insanely high likelihood, you will just be able to steamroll your opponent. And we have two cosmic cyclones, so. Even if we didn't. 
Or even if my like opponent had like disruption. Like look at all of this drawing, dude. Like it's insane. Like we're just gonna go into Ouroboros because we get a pop. Because he only has one card on the field, and Ouroboros will begin to pop a card when it's summoned because of Scepter. You go into Ouroboros because it'll pop, and then you get to rip a card out of the opponent's hand. So your opponent just effectively goes negative two there. So we just summon Nastin. Nastin's going to summon Ixchel. Ixchel will actually be able to search for a trap, and we are just going to... I mean, we have so much card advantage. Off of something that looked like a brick. Like we top banishment and we win. I mean this this deck is so broken. I I honestly think that this is one of the best decks in the meta. Especially for best of one. It's absolutely phenomenal. But going in here. Yeah. I think that's just about to sum it up. Basically just using your the perks of being able to draw for both. Uh, the stick and the chair. Or the stick chair and the dark lords. And then using you know your banishment your contact and your sanctified all both on the field and then in the graveyard to manage your life points and your bodies on the field to go into stuff like your desire and your uh receptor your sovereignty all that kind of stuff using your either your delteros or your or Ouroboros. boros it's just a really good deck guys i really enjoyed making all the all the, the a this video and b getting all the replays because this deck is insanely fun to play for me because uh, Dark Lords are actually one of my favorite decks, so I, I really enjoyed all this. So, if you like the content, want to support the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that wonderful stuff. Make sure you get in the Twitch. Uh, make, make sure you visit the Twitch as well, where we host tournaments uh, that are two dollars every Monday, and we have actually Damage Step coming up, which is a five dollar, I believe five dollar entry fee. Pretty sure five dollar entry fee. Not sure. It's it's higher though. Uh, but it gets to about $600 prize pool. That's actual, absolutely phenomenal. And then make sure you also get into the uh, Discord where we have free new player help as well as that's how you join the tournament. So gotta kind of got to get in there for all that. With that, I'm going to get on out of here. I'll see you guys later. I really appreciate you guys stopping by, and I'll see you.